a few months ago, the guidelines for sun protection were updated. These guidelines were specifically relevant to the Australian market, but they're probably applicable everywhere. And they actually probably overlap with a lot of guidance in a lot of other countries anyway. The nice thing is the new guidance takes on a little bit more of a nuanced approach. There is acknowledgement over different skin tones, the requirements of vitamin D, and how that all relates to the development of skin cancer. Please note I'm not really sharing my opinion in this video. I'm just relaying the guidelines. You can do with that information what you want. I'll link to the full guideline in my description box below. This is a little bit more of a summary and general overview. The main message is that the risks and benefits of sun exposure are different for different people. Some people are going to be more susceptible to developing skin cancer from sun exposure, while other people may not be as susceptible. And also how that all relates to vitamin D production, which is also a key factor of health. It's worth stressing that some people are very susceptible to skin cancer. And for those people, there is no known safe dose of sun exposure. So I'm not trying to suggest like throw caution to the wind. It's just about having a more over, it's just about having a more inclusive discussion. Now for the actual guidelines based on skin tones, I'm going to cut to a few slides rather than me talking. I just don't want to get anything wrong and this way you can read the words directly yourself. So yeah, these next few moments will just be like a PowerPoint slideshow. <laughs> So I hope those guidelines made sense, but as I said, I've got the full information down in my description box below. Now, just moving on to some key points about vitamin D, I'm just going to list a few key points that I found interesting from the guidance. The first point is that vitamin D may reach a steady state in your skin, basically like when a plateau is reached. This means that further exposure to UV radiation doesn't lead to additional vitamin D production. The next point is the efficiency of vitamin D production actually declines with an increasing UV radiation dose in a single episode. This suggests that exposing your skin to sun exposure for shorter periods across multiple days in the week is actually better than, so that's better than longer periods of sun exposure on fewer days. This way you kind of get the benefit of vitamin D. It's a safer approach as far as skin cancer risk and also just allows for the natural DNA process between sun exposures. So yeah, short burst windows seems to be the way to go. Another point is that the application of sunscreen doesn't abolish the production of vitamin D. There's some suggestion that it might reduce, but you also have to consider that most people don't apply sunscreen properly, so you're not getting 100% of coverage everywhere, and sunscreen itself does not ever like block the sun 100% anyway. It's really just a way to help mitigate some of the exposure. Another important note is that the level of vitamin D production and the requirements associated with that will vary across where you live, the time of day, the time of year, your skin tone, and even just like clothing coverage. So you might end up actually needing to seek advice from your doctor about how to balance that or manage that for your particular situation and lifestyle. Last thing I'll mention is that time outdoors, like super early in the day, actually doesn't seem to benefit vitamin D production very much. So the guidance indicates that's good for mood and to help with circadian rhythm, but not specifically relevant to vitamin D. I, they use the phrase like early morning. Okay, so that's the end of all of the key points from the actual guidance. I just want to move to a little bit more of like a personal view on this. The reason that I use sunscreen, and I think a lot of you watching this video is not specifically for skin cancer prevention. So a lot of us use sunscreen really for aesthetic reasons, you know, like it's a vanity thing. We want to reduce the likelihood of developing deep lines and wrinkles. We want to help combat pigmentation. We want to, you know, help reduce redness and inflammation in the skin. And we just want to protect overall skin components like collagen and elastin. So sunscreen and other sun protection methods, it does a lot more than just assist with skin cancer. Now, skin cancer should be the priority. It's the main reason sunscreen, you know, even exists. But this whole conversation is just about like health overall and that there are a lot of factors that overlap, a lot of different reasons people do things. I think it's just important to ensure we're looking at this conversation as a whole and really considering why you're using sun protection methods and whether or not that actually applies and how that applies to your skin tone and vitamin D for overall health. We also all want to avoid leathery skin, right? And one of the best ways to do that is to avoid sun. A tan ultimately is skin damage. So 
that will lead to a certain appearance as you age. And some people won't care. Some people will care. That's very much a personal decision. Now, you would have noticed as well in the guidance, they talk about five ways of sun protection. So this guidance is not about sunscreen exclusively, but all of the ways. In Australia, we've always had a thing known as like slip, slop, slap, and they added seek and slide. And those are the five ways of helping protect your skin and limiting or controlling sun exposure. So I'll list that on another slide so you've got it to have a look at or screenshot. This was such a good skin safety, skin cancer awareness campaign. It definitely ingrained in me as a child. But I think a lot of people take the slip, slop, slap thing in stride when they're exposed to sun exposure, like at the beach on really hot days. But this guidance and these five ways of protecting your skin is actually a daily implementation. Overall, I'm just really happy that they have sent through this additional guidance adding more nuance to a topic is always good and you know we they everybody just wants to ensure that the correct most updated information is being passed on to the public you know if we're to trust science and rely on it it's important that we all move with it and and understand that there are different people with different requirements. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. The main takeaway again is just that, you know, I think it's good to stay personally updated on things and that we don't talk about every topic from our own vantage point, but rather understanding the spectrum and how that applies to multiple different types of people. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.